Thanks everybody for coming out. I think we're going to go ahead and get started here uh, for the first session of the day. Uh, nice and bright and early, but thank you all for coming out. Um, we're going to be talking about building a better document library in Drupal. Um, and so, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Caleb Thorne, and I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, I'm a support manager at an agency called Monarch Digital. And we do Drupal development for a lot of government and higher education um, organizations. Um, and so I'm also the enforcer of all of the Drupal best practices within the, the organization. Um, I was actually introduced to Drupal at Drupal Camp Colorado back in 2009. Um, that was when pre-process functions had just been added to Drupal 6 and they were all the, the rage. So we've come a long ways uh, from there. And it's exciting to see where, uh, where Drupal is continuing to, to grow. And then for fun, um, I also run an aftermarket Lego store um, in Colorado Springs. So if anybody wants to talk Drupal or Lego, uh, come see me afterwards. I'd be happy to talk about uh, either of those, those subjects. All right, and a big thank you to all the sponsors here at um, GovCon. Without them, this uh, wouldn't be possible. So yeah, big thank you. I'm going to pull up my notes here because I cannot see that screen. Give me one second. All right, so a little bit of background. Um, if you've ever worked with documents in Drupal, you know that document revisions and broken links can be a major challenge. In fact, this single issue has been one of the most reported issues that we get from content managers or people using Drupal, and especially you know, if you're doing any kind of documents with PDFs, anything other than images or other types of media, um, it can be a, a challenge dealing with revisions and updates to documents and dealing with any broken links that, um, that may come out of that. Um, so the solution that I'm going to go through today is one that we originally developed for the Texas Education Agency. And we originally migrated over 10,000 documents from their Ektron system into Drupal 9. And then since then we've upgraded them to Drupal 10. They have over 200 content managers that are responsible for uploading documents and managing web pages on their Drupal site. And so you can imagine the the amount of documents that are uploaded and revisions that are added. And really, where the problem became even more apparent was during the pandemic. And so there were times with these regulations that they were, that they were putting out for all of their teachers and students across the entire education space in Texas. They were putting out all of these new regulations. And so there would be the same document, whether a PDF or other other types, that would be updated sometimes every 15 minutes. There would be a new version of the document that was uploaded. And it was critical that when teachers or educators accessed that file, that they received the latest version of that file. And so that really exposed a lot of these challenges um, with with Drupal and with the, the way that Drupal handles documents. So this solution was developed out of the, those challenges. And since then, now this has become our default configuration on all of our Drupal sites, whenever we're setting up the document uh, media type. Um, so since then, we've implemented it for the city of Colorado Springs. Um, we've implemented it for the um, National Security Archive at GWU. Um, and then several other uh, clients too that have been able to, to benefit from this. All right, so there's three uh, primary challenges that you have probably run into if you've worked with documents in, um, in Drupal. The first one is broken links. So every time you upload a new version of a document, Drupal will rename the file and that can cause broken links for either other web pages that you have or anybody that's bookmarked that, that document and that link um, you know, may either get a broken link or they may get the old version of the file and not the updated revision. Um, it's also a challenge for workflows and access control. Maybe you have a workflow in place where all your documents have to go through accessibility review 
before they're, before they're published. As soon as you upload a document, even if the media type is draft or accessibility or unpublished, if you're using the public file system, that document is public right away. And so if someone has that link, they're going to get potentially a file that has not gone through whatever workflow you have in place. And then folders and organization is a challenge. Um, if you're using the public file system, all of your files go into sites default files. One of the easiest ways to tell if you're looking at a Drupal site is if their files are located as sites default files or, or similar. Um, you can do some organization within that, you know, through the file field, you can set a subfolder, things like that, but it's always going to be size default files, something, and you don't have a lot of control of where those documents live from an architecture standpoint. Um, so just to kind of do a, a, some screenshots here, I was going to do a live, um, a live demo, Oops. let me go back. Um, but due to the setup here, we're just going to be able to look at some screenshots. And so this first one here is just an example of a, something that I'm sure everybody here has seen. Uh, when you go in and upload a new document, the first time you upload it, there's really not a, a huge problem. Your, your document gets uploaded to size default files, example.pdf in this case. But the second screenshot there is where the the challenge appears. If you need to make an update to that file, upload a new version, you can go into that media entity and remove the old file, upload a new one, but Drupal is going to rename that with an underscore zero or underscore one. It's going to, it will keep every version of that file. And what that means is now your new file is located at example underscore one dot pdf. And so that's, that's what those broken links or those challenges with uh, someone has that old URL bookmark. So any pages that you've linked this document to, you have to go through and either update those pages or find some other way of setting up redirects, um, some way of making sure that people are going to get the right version of that file. Um, all right. So yeah, just to kind of recap here, and, and just out of curiosity, out of show of hands, who has run into this problem in Drupal? Yeah, figured it's, it's pretty much everybody. Um, all right? And so yeah, there's, there's some contrib solutions that have tried to solve this. There's things like the IMCE module, uh, which is essentially giving you an FTP interface or an FTP-like interface to your, your file system. Um, there's the file replace module, but we've come up with what I think is, is a better way that, um, that will solve a lot of these, these challenges. So uh, what is that solution? There's three key concepts that for this, um, this particular solution. And the first one is we're going to store documents in the private file system. This way, by default, nobody has access to those documents except for the content managers or the administrators responsible for those files. Uh, this does add a little bit of overhead to delivering a file because it is going through Drupal, but the trade-off in our experience is well worth it by giving you a lot more control over how those documents are delivered to your end users. Uh, I would not recommend putting images and other media types in the, the private file system. This would be just for documents. The second one is a new module that we developed. It's actually a very small module, but we've called it Media Canonical Download. And we'll look at this a little bit more here as we go on. But essentially, all that it does is it says when you access a media URL, for example, media slash one, two, three, instead of displaying a web page with a link to the file, it just downloads the file directly. And so this is actually the key that kind of makes this whole thing work. Um, and it allows you to use all of the features of Drupal's entity system with your documents. Um, and then the third one here that, that we found really useful is setting up a virtual folder system using taxonomy. And so with this, you can set up your own folder taxonomy with its own hierarchy. 
And you can use that then to generate URLs using Path Auto and using Drupal's built-in um, URL alias system. And that allows you then to create these media URLs that, are, that don't have size default files, but instead can have whatever structure or organization that you're looking for. Um, so we have a few <coughs> configuration steps here. Um, so it's a fairly simple setup to get this working. Uh, one thing I will note, these configuration steps would be if you're building out a new site or a new uh, media type for documents, uh, if you have existing documents that are already using the public file system, there's a little bit of work you would have to do to migrate to this system. But this will give you an idea of the steps required to um, set up. So the first thing is you're going to grab the media canonical download module and install that. Um, you want to make sure that you have standalone URLs enabled for your under your media library settings. This is what creates that media path um, for, for media entities. Uh, by default, that's just media slash media ID. Um, but we'll use Path Auto to, to set up custom aliases for that. Um, you want to make sure you configure your file name sanitization also under those uh, media settings. And then you're going to go and either create a new document media type, or you can edit the existing one that Drupal provides. And then on those, um, so when you create that, make sure that you select create new revision, um, assuming you want to keep track of revisions of those those documents. Um, and then the new setting that the media canonical download module provides is a setting that just says serve file directly. And if you check that, that's what's going to enable the module to download the file when you visit that media URL. Okay, and then the, the last one there is just set, the, set that field to make sure that it's uploading to the private file system. You could do this with the public file system as well, um, but by, by using that private file system, it will allow you to have much more control over those workflows and drafts and access to, um, in particular, old or unpublished media. And then a couple optional things is you can set up that folder taxonomy vocabulary and set it up with whatever kind of hierarchy or folders that you would want. Um, and you can configure your content moderation workflows if you need to have drafts or accessibility reviews or archive options on there. And the last one then is configure the path auto pattern uh, for those media entities so that it uses your folder structure and the media name as part of that URL. Okay. And so then again here, instead of a live demo, we're going to do a couple screenshots. Um, however, if this is something that you would like to see as a demo, I would be happy to demo it for anybody that, that would be interested. Um, so just come find me and we can find a, a spot and I can show you exactly how this works and kind of what it looks like for both the administrator as well as the, the end user who would be accessing those, those files. All right, so this first one is just an example of when you're setting up the, those field settings make sure that you select that private file system. Um, this is the media canonical download module. This again is one, this is a module that we've been using for about two years as a custom module, and we just released it a few weeks ago as a, as a contrib option. So this is one you can go download today and start using um, on, your, on your sites. And what it does here, is it will add this, this setting to your, your media configuration. So down at the bottom, it'll give you an option that you can select and you can check that box that says serve file directly. What that will do then is when anybody visits that media page, it will look for a file field and it will download the file attached to that instead of displaying the web page. You can put in some overrides as well if you want only certain types of files to be downloaded. So for example, let's say you're using PDF Viewer to embed PDFs on the page and you still want your other 
the wrapper elements around that, you could exclude PDFs uh, from, from this feature. And that way, PDFs, you'd still get a web page with the embedded PDF document. But then if you're looking at something like a, a Word doc or an Excel spreadsheet, then um, you would be able to, then those would be served, served directly. And then we can look here at the path auto patterns. Um, so this is just an example of what you can do if you wanted to set up kind of a traditional uh, folder structure. It's using the, the taxonomy field folder that, that we had added to the media type. And so it just uses all the, the parents of that taxonomy term as well as the, the folder name to build that folder structure. And we're using the media name field as the last part of that. Now one thing to keep in mind, if you want it to be a, to look like a traditional document URL, then there is one setting you need to go in on in Path Auto and make sure that you allow the period character as part of those URLs if you want to add an extension. And what you can do then is in the name of that media entity, you can add the extension as part of that. And so to the end user, it will look like just any other um, any other document type URL. Alright, so here's an example of what that media uh, uh, edit page would look like using this new new method. Uh, so we have the name field there at the top, and notice I put in there an example.pdf. That's the download file name. And in fact, it's some of our sometimes we've added some custom code just a form alter to rename that field to download file name so that it's clearer for content managers. That's the, the file name that's going to appear for end users. It doesn't matter what the file name that shows in the upload field is. That's what's stored on the server. What the end user is going to see both when they access the URL and when the file downloads and saves to their computer, they'll see that download file name and it will always deliver the latest revision of that document with that same, same name regardless of what Drupal wants to call it on the back end. And so to kind of recap some of that, some of the benefits of this uh, solution. So using those taxonomy based folders and path auto patterns, so that gives you highly customized folder structure. You can use those, that taxonomy to, to organize your documents however you want in in your site. As long as that media name, that download file name, and the folder that you've assigned it to, as long as those never change, you can keep uploading new versions and new revisions of this media, of this document, and it will always have the same URL, and it will always deliver the latest version of the, the file. So this uh, works, and it, this works out of the box with Drupal, with the way that the private file system works, is it will allow access to that file if it's attached to a published entity. And so if your media is currently in a draft state, then that public, or that private URL will not be accessible um, to users. However, once it's in a published state, then it becomes accessible um, publicly for, for those users. And then if you're using the redirect module, then when you make changes to either that name field or to the folder structure or to any other field that might be building that URL, the redirect module will set up those redirects for you automatically. So even in, even in those cases, this still allows your content managers to change those, those names or those paths if they need to, and it manages those redirects so you don't end up with broken links. All right, so just some final thoughts here. Um, so some other things that we've been able to, to do with this, and what I really like about this solution is it opens up the media system to all of the other modules that work with entities or work with fields. This basically allows you to use 
all of those to manage your your documents and your media types. And so one thing that you can do is using the taxonomy access control module is you can set up access based on those folders. So if you had content managers that needed only to access and manage documents in a single folder, you can set it up using it because those folders are now taxonomy based. Um, this was actually a big deal for the Texas Education Agency um, for their content managers. Uh, not so much just to prevent people from accessing other documents, but just to keep it organized so when those man content managers log in, they see only the documents that they're responsible for instead of having to filter through everything. Um, and again, we talked a little bit about the content moderation workflows, but this allows you to use all of those, all of the features of that workflow module. And so often we'll have clients that want to have a draft accessibility review, maybe some other various types of review before that document gets published or before a new version of that document gets published. And so this allows you to, to set up your workflow just as you would with any other node or any other entity type. And it will make sure that those files are not accessible publicly until you get to that final step of publish. And if you're dealing with revisions to documents, you can have a draft or an accessibility review version that's still going through that workflow. It will, the media entity will continue to deliver the, the currently published version until the new one makes it to that final state. Um, and then it will update that URL um, or update the document that's downloaded at that, that URL. All right, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about document migration uh, because this is one challenge that we've had even especially with organizations that have thousands and thousands of files that are already in the public file system. And so how do you switch to this um, this system? And so if, if you have a big document library currently, there is a migration process that you would need to do to move those files physically from the public file system to the private file system. And then set up any redirects because you may have links out there in the wild that are still pointing to sites default files and those now need to be set up redirects need to be set up to point to the new folder structure uh, that's been created and then there's another step there to check for those broken links uh, once those files are are moved so if you're starting from scratch this is a great way to, to get it set up to save yourself a lot of headache in the future. And this is our, our default uh, configuration for any new sites. Uh, if you have a big document library, then there's going to be a little bit of effort to, to switch over to, to this method. But it is doable. Um, and, you know, we've been able to, to manage that just through Drupal's migration scripts to be able to, to set that up. Um, so that's all that I had today. We're a little bit early because I was expecting to kind of do a full live demo, uh, but that just gives us some extra time for Q&A. So I'd, I'd be happy to hear if anybody has a, a question or thoughts on um, you know, how something like this might be able to, to help with your organization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the, the question, if I understand correctly, is around caching and what happens when um, if somebody accesses a file in their browser and then browsers notoriously cache files forever. Um, and so even if the UR, if the document in that URL has changed, if if the browser sees that it's already been downloaded, it will deliver that downloaded cached version instead of getting a new one. Um, there still are some challenges with this method with caching. However, because it is 
it's not treated as a, as a file download directly as, as far as the browser is concerned. As far as the browser is concerned, it is delivering a page with that file download. So that has helped us get around some of those caching issues. Um, but I think there are still some challenges you might run into. And also, if you're using an edge cache like Varnish or, or something similar to that, there may be cases where you need to go in and, and flush those caches, or you may still need to use those um, cache buster parameter, query parameters um, to, to force a new download of, of the document. But yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Have you uh, seen a scenario where, where this works with the groups module where group uh, access to the different and resources? Yeah, absolutely. So the question was, uh, is this something that could work with the groups module? And I think this would be a great candidate for, for use with that. Really, it kind of what, what this allows is it really opens up the world to documents and makes documents um, just like you would manage a node or any other any other page on the site. So you could definitely use the group module to manage access to certain documents if you wanted to limit those um, documents just to members of a certain group or use it for access control for administrators as well. If you wanted to say only use only allow certain um, administrators to to access or to edit or manage those documents within their group. So yeah, it would it would work with any module that works with the entity system or with um, with media specifically. And the back there. Far back, yes. <laughs> Losing track of it somewhere in that process, 
And so this method lets you keep everything. It stays in the, in the private file system. It never has to move to the public file system. And access is controlled entirely by, by the media entity and by those workflows. So if you have a media that's in a draft state, the file is not accessible. As soon as you publish it, then that file becomes accessible publicly. Yeah, so the question was uh, um, regarding organizing from the administration side, organizing those those documents. And that's where also I think the taxonomy folder structure comes in to play there um, because you can then set up your views or your administration pages to show only the documents that are relevant to a given content manager or within a given section. So, you know, some of it might just be setting up filters on your view to make it easy to find within a folder. But you could even create a traditional folder structure where it would show, you know, here's all of your top level folders and you drill down into those to find various documents. So, even though it's a virtual file system, it's not, they're not really organized that way on the physical disk. Um, really what matters is what the content manager and the end user sees, and so you can control that all through through that taxonomy system or through views using filters, things like that, to set up those administration pages. Yeah. I'm glad you have question D. If you have a traditional order structure that you want to use that you really need to control down. But not like put a folder and then show an RPA and check out folder and some folders and you could you want it to be like a folder so you can say open file. How would you Right. Yeah, so the question was if you wanted instead of where you you click on a top level folder and it opens, say, another page with all the, the subfolders in there, but maybe more of like a drill down accordion type um, display almost like what you would get in like a Windows file system there. Um, I would probably have to think a little bit about specific modules to use there, but I think there are tools within, I'm thinking like Taxonomy Manager, um, which allows you to have kind of, when you have a hierarchical taxonomy, you can get that interface that has, that allows you to kind of drill down into those, into that taxonomy uh, in a, a similar fashion. So that's probably where I would start, is looking at the taxonomy manager uh, module, and then there might, you might have to extend that a little bit to where the final step, you know, once you get to a, a subdirectory that actually has media assigned to it, you would have to create a view to display the, the media in that folder. Uh, but yeah, taxonomy manager is the first thing that, that comes, comes to mind. Gotcha. Yeah, so the question was about overhead, and does this add a lot of overhead on the, the database? Um, it does add some overhead um, for, for documents, because when you use that private file system, instead of serving the file directly and just bypassing Drupal entirely, the web server still has to bootstrap Drupal and then it's delivered through through Drupal. So um, so there is some overhead to using this method. Um, however, that can be mitigated in the same way that you would deal with other other pages that may be heavy, and that's going to be through caching or uh, or other methods to minimize that that overhead. But this is something that I think storing those files in the, the private file system, the benefit is to get the access control and to be able to, to keep track of where those, those, who has access to those documents. 
If you don't need that feature, then probably just keeping them in the public file system, you know, would, would be would be a little bit faster than uh, than this. And I certainly don't recommend doing using this method for things like images or videos or other types of media that one don't change very often or that don't have direct links usually to them, um, and that don't really have the benefit of that access control piece um, to them. So yeah, I would limit it to documents or if there's if there really is a good use case for for needing to control that that access to those those media.